Guys, what's going on? Welcome to Serial at Midnight. My name is Heath, and in this episode, I'm going to give you a quick review of Invaders of the Lost Gold. This is a new Blu-ray hot off the presses from Severin Films. We unboxed this here on the channel in our last Horror Pack episode. We did a Horror Pack unboxing and then unboxed Invaders of the Lost Gold. Uh, this was sent to me by MVD. This is the direct market edition. If you ordered yours from Severin, or if you do order yours from Severin, probably going to get the limited edition slipcase that's got uh, some things that aren't on the it's got nudity i should just say it's got nudity on the cover this is the direct market edition so of course no none of that uh but when we were when when we unboxed this i hadn't seen it yet right so i've watched the movie i've watched the special features and i want to tell you a little bit about what i think about invaders of the lost gold so as you can judge by the title and the font this is a indiana jones exploitation style movie it comes out in 1982 so they're chasing the success of raiders of the lost art from 1981 uh it's shot in the philippines on a very low budget with um character actors that we know but you know so it's Stuart whitman uh, woody strode who was in spartacus and a lot of spaghetti westerns as well i think he was a baseball player in the 60s, I want to say. Um, oh, Odd Job. Harold Sakata, Odd Job, is in this as well, you know, from James Bond. The, like, you know, cracking. Those, those neck cracks. Um, uh, Laura Emanuel. Is it Gimser or Jimser? Anyway, Emanuel. Uh, she's in this as well. Um, it's. <sighs> I'm trying to think out of this. Because, so it's the story of like a quest for lost World War II gold. Like the story opens up in World War II, stashing some gold. And then it's years later and the characters lead this, you know, Stuart Whitman leads this team, this expedition to go recover the gold. Um, it's not a huge budget movie. So there's not a lot of like set pieces or anything in it. It's a lot of dialogue. It's a lot of scenes like we're riding down the river on a boat. We're sitting at the campsite. Uh, campsite. Um, if you, I, I will say this, the, the, there's a poll quote on the back of this, a mishmash of craziness, uh, gratuitous nudity, violence, and all-star cast. I think all of those things, that's from, uh, rock shock pop. I think a lot of those are overstated. And if you come in expecting those things, you might be disappointed. Come in expecting a little bit of those things. It is violent, but it's not like a brutal slasher. Uh, it is all, there's some nudity in it, but I wouldn't say that it's just like wall to wall gratuitous nudity, nudity. So if you're coming in expecting that, you're going to be disappointed too. Um, and all-star cast, we, we said who the cast was. I think that with Severin, you have to read the hype and then bring it back down about 50%. 50%. You know, the, the Christopher the Eurocrypt of Christopher Lee recently came out from Severin. I love the box set. I mean, it's fantastic. It's all these really interesting deep cuts for Christopher Lee. And if you're a Lee completist or a really fan of his all of his work and you want to see all of it there's stuff that we've never seen before stuff we've never had access to before um but it's not great movies that most of the movies are not great and i think that by over promising they set expectations so high so i just noticed with severin there's a lot of hype a lot of these guys do this you know there's there's a certain amount listen i've interviewed fred olin ray right there's a there's a certain amount of carnival barking to the product to, to selling a product like this so you got to just read it for what it is and bring it back down a little bit you go into this with reasonable expectations i think you're going to have a good time uh anything shot in the philippines is already visually interesting i love these movies I, I champion these movies because for so long um you know they were made for the exploitation the drive-in you know era and then the video store era strike commando one strike commando two from severin just in the last month to six weeks or so those were made for the video market to cash in on the rambo success and the missing missing in action success this you know comes a little bit before that but these are movies that didn't really live beyond that vhs era and so now for severin to be kind of rescuing these because they only exist on videotape most of the time to be rescuing these putting these out on great beautiful restorations this has been restored i'm trying to say as a 2k restoration it looks really really good for these low budget movies to look so good i mean it's really a blessing right um but I love these Filipino exploitation movies because they're such they're so visually interesting. I mean, they look like 
a million bucks, even though it didn't cost a million bucks. So the special features, we've got a uh, Rumble in the Jungle, an interview with director Alan Birkinshaw. He remembers so much about the movie. He has stories about the uh, the filming process, like how they wrangled an alligator for this scene where a guy gets eaten by an alligator. Uh, and how they like the alligator was like sleepy, so they had to shake it, and it's like ooh. And how they like had him tied down and stuff. There's a story about how they would set off the squibs for people, like the explosions and things. And this one guy got electrocuted because uh, the Philippines were wild, man. They were so wild. I one of the other. Uh, this is also from Severin. Uh, Zombie Three, I want to say it is the Fulci collaboration with is it Mate and uh, anyway. Uh, one of the stunt guys is talking about how they like there was a there was a building and like the floor would just collapse out of this building in the Philippines because they there was no regulations there was no safety conditions it really was just kind of like anything goes uh, so out of that comes Invaders of the Lost Gold we've got that interview we've also got uh, outtakes from Machete Maidens Unleashed that's the documentary about. Filipino exploitation movies. It's from, uh, is it Mark Hartley? I believe is his name. He did the uh, Not Quite Hollywood, which is the documentary about Canon, about, uh, no, about um, Australian cinema. He did the Canon Films, Electric Boogaloo, the Canon Film Story. Uh, and he did Machete Maidens Unleashed, and this has outtakes from that. So the interviews with Alan Birkinshaw about this movie taken from the sessions uh, from Machete Maidens Unleashed. So... Uh, and they also talked to wife of producer Dick Randall, Corliss Randall as well. So it's Alan Birkinshaw and then the wife of the producer. But really get into like how they financed it and what the uh, behind the scenes stuff was like. It's very interesting. So if you're into this sort of thing, I would highly recommend it. I would just say keep your expectations reasonable. This is not like a loss. This isn't like finding Raiders of the Lost Ark all these years later. This is a very low budget, very exploitative movie that's... Um, does what it can with what it has. And for me, that's exciting because I love these things. It, it, the boundaries of a movie, to me, are almost as interesting as the things that succeed in some of these movies, right? So we champion this stuff. This is available from Severin and uh, through other retailers as well, like Amazon and Deep Discount. I'll put a link to it in the description of this video where you can pick this up. Invaders of the Lost Gold. Guys, thanks so much. Take care. Until next time, here's where to go and what to do.